faster, faster, faster. Hello? Why you splash paint on my door? Huh? Hello? Is it? Hello? Johnny here, who is this? This is Tom. Why you send your guys to splash paint on my door? Why? You're supposed to repay your loan, what? Johnny, I told you before. I'm not prepared to pay you 20% interest. We agree on 7%. 7%? You think I run charity? Ah? But that was what we agreed. We agreed 20%. Friend, listen. No, you listen. You wanted money for your daughter to study, and I lend you the money. All I ask now is for you to pay back 20,000 plus 20% 20 interest. 20%? You're mad. Okay. If you won't pay up, you must do something for me. Open bank account. You better be careful. Okay. But he said he will pay me to open and hold the bank account. And you believe him? I can't believe it, no. You don't want to take money from a loan shark than from my sister, who's more than willing to lend us money. I didn't want to take her money, okay? But you're okay taking money from a gangster. Okay, I made a mistake. But what can we do about it now? They are threatening you. You better report to the police. Good evening, Mr. Tan. I'm Senior Investigating Officer Leong. Have a okay. seat. I understand you make a police report regards to someone splash paint on your door. Yeah, they even splash all money, pay money on the wall. Do you see the person who did no, it? No, no, no. Did you borrow money from any unlicensed money lender? Yes, I borrowed some money to pay for my daughter's studies. From whom did you borrow the money? I borrowed from this man who called himself Johnny. Johnny? Did he use any other name besides Johnny? Well, that was the only name he used. But come to think of it, I think that is not his real name, you know. Anything else, Mr. Tom? Yeah, he also asked me to open a bank account for him. Did you? No, 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 no. I came to lodge a police report. Did I do anything wrong? You did the right thing by reporting this incident. But what about those loan sharks? Uh? What happened if they come after my family? We'll increase police patrol where you live. Mm -hmm. Should they harass you again, call Triple Nine. We'll deal with them. Acts of vandalism have been reported in various places in Singapore. At Block 833, Tampanese Street 83. Block 221 Alpha, Jurong East Street 21. At each of these sites, a phone number was clearly written on the wall. You trace the number to a prepaid SIM card. Though we are unable to locate the person who bought the card, our investigations show that the number is still being used by one Ho Yu Fei. Give you so much time and you cannot pay back! Hey, oh boss, I'll pay back when I win back the money. But what if you lose again? How are you going to pay back? I don't know. You don't know! Very simple. And people like you should know. If you owe money, you have to pay back, right? Yes, no pay back. What do you want me to do? Also, it's very simple. If you can't pay up, you work for us. Understand? Yu Fei is a runner. He reports to a loan shark or Along. Who in turn reports to a syndicate boss or Tao Ke. So there are three levels in a typical loan shark syndicate? Yes. To cripple the syndicate, we need to get the boss. The problem is, the guy at the top is usually faceless. The 
people who work for him may not know who he is unless he reveals himself. Such arrangements are made, obviously, to evade detection. In the case of this syndicate, investigation revealed there are two main loan sharks, one of whom supervises the opening of bank accounts and also transfers of funds. Willie, the chip. This is so what? Here's something for you. Yes. What do you have for me? Okay. I'll pay you to hold this bank account. So when I give you the money, you must bank them into this bank account. Understand? Yes. The other loan shark is in charge of dispensing the loans as well as harassing debtors. He's also known as Johnny. Not so fast. Sorry, sorry. Inside is $1,500. Your interest is 7% per week. You understand? Yes. Hello? Aning eh? Johnny here. Chongho took the money. You know what to do if you can't repay? I will find him a job. Fox Rock is leaving. Over. Johnny is a loan shark and Yufe reports to him. We track Johnny and believe he stays at Canberra Road. We believe he has information to lead us to his boss. So are you guys ready? Yes, sir! Move up at five minutes. You two, stand by here. The rest, let's go. Who is that? Hey, Adi. Oh, what the...? Stop! Go! Oh, I, I oh, don't want here! What are those for? Dr. Yong Hai, answer the question. I'm a painter. You're a painter. Where are the brushes and roller? Sir, it's a bank book. Who are these? They belong to friends. Your friends too, you're holding on to their bank books. Yes. So what do they want you to do with their bank books? I don't know. Did you steal them? Okay, okay, it's him. Hey, hey! Dr. Leong Hai, you're under arrest for unlicensed money lending. Who is Anand? He's the one running the whole show. Doesn't your boss have a surname? People sometimes call him Atan. Other times, he's called Awong. Really? Like you're Johnny, when you're actually Leong Hai? In this business, we never use our real name, sir. What I'm telling you is all I know. No wonder it's such a hard nut to crack. He actually doesn't know the real names of the people he reports to. Just because in unlicensed money lending, concealing of real identity would be a norm, especially among the bosses. So, what do you have? We searched the contact list of Leong Hai's handphone and found a frequently used number. Have you placed a search on this number? Yes, we traced the line to one Ko Chu Hui.
Kiss me. house at Jalan Loyang Besar belongs to one Ku Ju Huat. Ku Ju Huat? Do you think he's the man running the syndicate? Well, according to the records, he owns a small used car dealership and it is the only business he has. He also has a landed property at Jalan Tari Piring, on top of the penthouse. So you're saying it's unlikely for him to own those properties based on what he's doing? Well, unless he used to run a successful legitimate business, enjoyed persistent bull run at the stock market or inherited much family wealth, it's very unlikely he'd be able to afford what he owns today. So what was he doing before he started his used car business? We did a background check on Ku and found he actually started off as an along runner. Really? Over the years, he rose the ranks and became an along himself. When his boss was arrested and in prison in 2005, he started his own loan sharking ring. And you think that he's using his used car business as a front for his unlicensed money lending activities? Possible. Okay. Gather the team. Let's have a briefing. Yes, sir. We have information that Ku Ju Huat is the boss of this loan chucking ring. Being the mastermind, his arrest will definitely cripple the whole syndicate. Team A, you follow me to Jalan Loyang Besar. That's where Ku Ju Huat is reported staying. Team B, you follow Tyson to Yishun Street 72. That's where Ko Chu Hui, the other along, is staying. Any question? No, sir. Let's go. Sai Oleong from CID. May I speak with Ko Ju Huat? What is it about? Who's at the door? Dear, the police are looking for you. What's going on? Yes. Am I Sai Oleong from CID? Are you Ko Ju Huat? How may I help you? Can we talk inside? Sure. Ko Chu Hui, SIO Ang CID. Hey! Hey! Investigating some unlicensed money lending activities, and we'd like you to help us. So, what you want me to do? Can we talk inside? Unlicensed money lending. I don't know what you're talking about. I run a car dealership, and my wife here is the manager. Okay, we need to search your house. Is okay? Okay, sure. Okay, Eddie, you stay here. Come, let's go. Wasting time, you won't find anything. 
Like I told you, I'm just an honest car dealer. Okay. This is the last room. Can you open it? Of course. What are you doing? What is this? What are these? My personal documents and invoices. Or seize this as evidence. This safe. Can you open it? Please open it. There's nothing important inside. Even if it's nothing important, we need to see what's inside. Is this unimportant? We conducted a search at his premises to search for evidence for his involvement in this unlicensed money lending syndicate. Um, during the search, our officers discovered a trapdoor leading to a secret room in the penthouse. The secret room that he built behind the wardrobe was big enough to have shelves filled with files which were seized as case exhibits. A working desk, a bed, two safes, and it was fully air-conditioned. In each of these safes, there are stacks of $50 notes and notes of other denominations. In all, we seized about cash $454,000 in total. Could you hide? You're under arrest for unlicensed money lending. Coffee, Mr. All these. Seize them. Yes, sir. Ko Chiu Hui, you're under arrest for unlicensed money lending. Cuff him. Yes, sir. This motorbike worth 18000 was purchased by Ko Chiu Huat using the criminal proceed that he earned from the unlicensed money lending business. This Austin Mini worth about 25000 was also purchased by Ko Chiu Huat using the illegal proceed that he made from the unlicensed money lending business. This was one of the largest haul by CID in the last four years. With the arrest of Ku Ju Huat and his accomplices, we had effectively and completely smashed the entire syndicate. Never get involved with unlicensed money lenders. It's a living hell once you are involved with them. Ku Ju Huat was found guilty for 116 counts of carrying on an unlicensed money lending business. He was sentenced to 65 months imprisonment, fined $300,000, and given 21 strokes of the cane. Members of his syndicate were also found guilty of assisting unlicensed money lending activities. Tok Leong Hai was sentenced to 52 months imprisonment, fined $151,000, and given 12 strokes of the cane. Ko Chiu Hui was sentenced to 20 months imprisonment and fined $455,000. Quack Sir Huat was sentenced to 24 months imprisonment and fined $360,000. Ho Yu Fei was sentenced to 24 months imprisonment and given 12 strokes of the cane. Loy Jit Chan, a runner who worked closely with Ko Chiu Hui, was sentenced to 14 months imprisonment and fined $250,000. Never borrow from loan sharks. They charge exorbitant interest rates and will not hesitate to use strong arm tactics to get money back from you even subjecting you and your loved ones to fear and embarrassment. Assisting loan sharks in whatever form is a serious crime. That includes allowing loan sharks to use your bank account or helping them to distribute flyers. To verify if a money lending business is indeed licensed, the public can check with the Registry of Money Lenders. If you have information on loan sharking activities, call the police hotline at 1-800-255-0000. Alternatively, you can also call the National Crime Prevention Council's ex Along hotline at 1-800-924-5664. All information will be kept strictly confidential. After the break, defensive riding tips for motorcyclists.
motorcyclists and their pillion riders are one of the most vulnerable groups of road users. They account for about 50% of the total road traffic fatalities in 2011. Defensive riding skills which focus on the vulnerability of motorcyclists, their handling of road hazards, as well as riding behaviour are taught to learner riders during their training curriculum. Here are some such defensive riding skills. Motorcyclists must anticipate the driving reactions of other motorists to the traffic hazards, such as in this instance, there was a breakdown vehicle. The motorcyclist did the right thing by reducing his speed to allow the car to filter into his lane even when the car driver did not signal to do so. Always make yourself visible by not riding in the blind spots of another vehicle. When riding, make sure you are able to see the car driver in his side mirror. If you are unable to see the driver, it is likely he wouldn't be able to see you too. Motorists, be aware. There could be a motorcyclist riding beside you. Always check your blind spots before turning or overtaking. The roads are meant to be shared. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. Exercise due care, diligence and courtesy on the roads at all times. On that note, I wish everyone a safe and pleasant journey. We've come to the end of this episode of Crime Watch. If you have any feedback, do feel free to drop us an email. I'm DSP Julius Lim, signing off. <laughs>